Diana, the Princess of Wales, the Pilgrims, and the Civil War are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is September 6, 2022. It is the 249th day of the year. There's 116 days left in 2022. It's the 36th Tuesday in the 37th week. It's the 78th day of summer. You got 16 days left until fall, and I can't wait. Today is National Read a Book Day. National Read a Book Day is observed annually on September 6th. On August 9th, we celebrate National Book Lovers Day. While these bookish days may seem similar. National Read a Book Day invites all of us to grab a book we might enjoy and spend the day reading it. Reading improves memory and concentration as well as reduces stress. Older adults who spend time reading show a slower cognitive decline and tend to participate in more mentally stimulating activities over their lifetime. Books are an inexpensive entertainment educational tool and a time machine. All right, let's see what else September 6th has given us. 1620, the Pilgrims sail from Plymouth, England, on the Mayflower to settle in North America. 1620. Now, there's a few details that get left out about the whole Pilgrim thing. They didn't call themselves Pilgrims at the time, they called themselves Separatists. They wanted to separate from the Church of England and be able to worship in their own way. They originally went to the Netherlands or Holland, whatever, and they tried and they set up a colony there and they tried to do their thing, but they noticed their children were kind of giving up on the English way of life. They wanted to be like England in another country and it wasn't working out, so they left. The stories of the New World had been floating around for some time and they figured that's exactly what they needed. And on September 6, 1620, a boat called the Mayflower left Plymouth, England with about 102 passengers, 40 of which were pilgrims. They had a contract with the famous Virginia Company to make a colony just north of Jamestown. After 66 days of crossing the Atlantic Ocean, they spotted what is now known as Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Knowing they had this contract and there were supplies and stuff in Virginia, they started heading south down the coast. Well, rough seas and storms kind of sent them back up to Massachusetts, where they decided that's where they would settle. Now, this is where they ran into their first problem. They had laws and regulations that they had to follow as part of their contract with the Virginia Company. Well, now they were no longer involved in that and people started having questions. Who's going to govern us? What are we going to do? How's this whole operation going to run? So 41 of the men got together and they came up with this thing called the Mayflower Compact, which kind of laid out the rules of this colony. And it said they would remain loyal to the King of England. They would practice their Christian faith and they would self-govern. One thing led to another. They made friends with the locals, ate a turkey, had corn on the cob. And now our kindergartners dress like pilgrims and Indians every November. 1861, the American Civil War. Forces under Union General Ulysses S. Grant bloodlessly capture Paducah, Kentucky, giving the Union control of the Tennessee River's mouth. This is a very important place back in the day. I mean, there was major waterways in this area. You have the Tennessee River, where it meets the Ohio River. You also have to the west of there, the Mississippi River, where it meets the Ohio River. And not too far north of Paducah, you have the Cumberland River. Back in the day, these were our highways. 1863, the American Civil War again. Confederate forces evacuate Battery Wagner and Morris Island in South Carolina. 1870, Louise Ann Swain of Laramie, Wyoming, becomes the first woman in the United States to cast a vote legally after 1807. 1901, an unemployed anarchist shoots and fatally wounds U.S. President William McKinley at the Pan American Exposition in Buffalo, New York. 1946, the United States Secretary of State James F. Burns announces that the U.S. will follow a policy of economic reconstruction in post-war Germany. 1976, during the Cold War, Soviet Air Defense Forces pilot Viktor Belenko lands his MiG-25 jet fighter in Japan and requests political asylum in the United States. His request is granted. 1997, the funeral of Diana, Princess of Wales, takes place in London. Well over a million people line the streets and two and a half billion watched around the world on television. So I've talked about this before. I understand this was a very emotional thing and I get it, but I don't see how someone could be so emotionally involved that they will travel across the country or the world to go to her funeral or to lay flowers at her grave, which when this was going on, they had a woman from Kentucky they were interviewing and she was sobbing and she said she had to come there from Kentucky to have closure. To have closure, that's something that happens when a relative dies. You need closure for that or maybe 
maybe something else. But when someone you don't know dies, you know, I don't know if you need closure. Maybe you need a therapist. I don't know. That's just me. Movies released on September 6, 2019. It Chapter 2. We just talked about this the other day that happened a year before this one was It from the Stephen King novel. And if you saw the first one, then the second one, you should understand this. A devastating phone call reunites the Losers Club 27 years after the events of the first It film. The film was based on the second half of the 1986 novel of the same name by Stephen King. The teaser trailer for the film dropped on May 9th, 2019. I didn't see the second one. But it did really well in the theaters. Born on September 6, 1947, Jane Curtin. She's an original cast member of Saturday Night Live who appeared in Kate and Alley. She also appeared in the 1993 film The Coneheads. That was a great movie if you've never seen it. She decided to pursue a career in comedy and performed with the comedy group The Proposition. She became known as the Queen of Deadpan. She married Patrick Lynch in 1975. She starred in The Librarian with Noah Wiley. Uh, you know, I know what they were trying to do with The Librarian. They were trying to, you know, kind of capitalize on the Nicolas Cage movies, the National Treasure, but they, it just wasn't done well. Their green screen and their computer graphics, it just wasn't up to par and it looked kind of weak. I was excited for it. I watched like a half an episode and never watched again. Died on September 6, 2018. We lost the great Burt Reynolds, veteran actor who starred in the 1970s film The Deliverance, The Longest Yard, and of course, some of the greatest movies ever, Smokey and the Bandit series. His role in the 1997 film Boogie Nights earned him critical acclaim. That was a pretty good movie. He earned a football scholarship to Florida State where he became roommates with football broadcaster Lee Corso. In 2012, he guest starred as himself on an episode of Archer titled The Man from Jupiter. He was also in My Name is Earl. If you've never seen My Name is Earl, I don't know where it's streaming right now. I loved that series, and I don't know why it went off the air. It was getting good ratings. It was doing great. I don't know. I think they all just felt they'd done everything they could with the show, and it was time to end it. I thought it was great. Poor Burt Reynolds was not looking good in the later years. Burt Reynolds died of a heart attack at the Jupiter Medical Center in Jupiter, Florida on September 6, 2018. He was 82 years old. I watched an interview with him. Him not too long before he passed away and he said one of his biggest regrets in life was how things ended with him and Sally Fields. I thought that was kind of nice and sad at the same time. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a productive day and be nice to each other.